Well, let's stay with that because the French President and German Chancellor are meeting tomorrow with the euro in crisis. What Nicolas Sarkozy and Angela Merkel uh, will be discussing may decide whether the currency and even the whole European project lives or dies, even with Chris Hune's uh, cautionary words there. Well, they're expected to agree to a full fiscal union with central oversight of how each and every eurozone country raises its taxes and spends its national budget. Financial penalties would be put in place for any nation that breaks the rules. And they hope that this would be enough to calm the current storm in the markets. Well, Martin Callanan is the leader of the Conservative group of MEPs. He joins us now from uh, Newcastle. Martin Callanan, thanks very much uh, for uh, being with us. Um, where do, you, do you think that the fisc full fiscal union is the way to go? Um, it could well be, but um, what we should never forget is that uh, you know, treaty change on this level could take several years. Uh, it has to be ratified in 27 member state parliaments. A uh, number of countries will probably have a uh, referenda on it. So, I mean, this is not going to solve the problem in the immediate future. It's a long way down the tracks. Right. It's a long way down the tracks. Angela Merkel clearly wants a treaty change. Uh, do you support that? Um, I'm not sure it's completely necessary. Um, as I said, it's not going to solve the problems in the short term. She clearly does want to pursue it, and um, you know what Germany wants, Germany normally gets in the in the EU. So it looks like the whole of the summit is uh, is going to be dominated by lots of apocalyptic warnings of all the things that will happen if they don't reach agreement. And uh, yeah, she'll probably get the treaty change that she wants. But as I say, it's a long, complicated road before it's finally agreed. And if we do get, if you go down that option of a treaty change, does there have to be a UK referendum on it? Because Ian Duncan Smith says that anything that is a sizable change in, then uh, you have to. Nick Clegg says, oh, it's not like that, actually. No, it's only if we're giving substantial new powers. How do you read it? Uh, well, we'll have to wait and see what it says. I mean, I just, we're, we're dealing with a number of hypotheticals here. Let's, we don't even know what the proposals are yet. France and Germany are meeting uh, tomorrow to We've got a pretty clear their, idea. Their, their formal proposals. It, we'll have to see what the final details are, how much it affects the UK, uh, what David Cameron manages to, uh, to, to achieve in terms of the negotiations. I hope he'll manage to to build in a number of safeguards for the EU because it has a number of potential problems uh, for the UK. Uh, we want to see repatriation of powers in areas that could help our economy to grow uh, as well. So uh, it's a huge hypothetical question. Uh, in principle, I have no problem with a referendum. Um, you know, I think we've had far too few referendums. If there'd been more referenda when the euro was established, uh, not least of which uh, in Germany itself, uh, then we might not have been in the same problems that we are now. How do you see fiscal union affecting the UK? Uh, well, the, the main problem for the UK is the, uh, is the caucusing aspect of it. Um, if the countries of the Eurozone draw closer together, if they vote as a bloc uh, in the European Union, then uh, that's what's called a qualified majority, to use the technical jargon. They could outvote the UK. Already we're seeing a number of, uh, of quite blatant attacks on the City of London, on financial services, and however unpopular they might be uh, in the UK. They're a critical part of, of the UK economy, and um, there's a lot of people with an agenda to transfer that business to, to Paris and Frankfurt. And we have to protect our position in that, as well as in some other areas, which I said earlier, are, are key for our growth. But, but how, how, how do you do that when you are marginalised? Uh, well, you're not marginalised, of course. David Cameron has a veto. Uh, that's the thing about treaty negotiations. All 27 member states have vetoes. All national parliaments have to approve the uh, new arrangements. And just think for a moment, the, the democratic problems that are going to be caused by this. What the Germans are talking about doing is imposing treaty change, which will say that every tax decision, every spending decision, every fiscal policy uh, is set not in the individual country, but is set by a, a committee in Brussels, presumably dictated to by Germany. You know, this has tremendous democratic uh, okay. uh, implications. What about general elections in those countries? You know, they, whoever gets elected is going to implement exactly the same policies as the previous government. It will not be long before an extremist party actually puts forward an alternative vision and, uh, uh, and then you will see a proper breakup. All right, Martin Callan, very interesting.